it is beyond a huge honor for me to be interviewing the man, the legend, Ronald Feynman. You go by Ron or Ronald? Ron. Ron's good. Ron's good. But I, I never read anybody's bio, but I have to read yours because, I mean, there's just, I mean, you're amazing. Dr. Ronald A. Feynman is no stranger to the field of cosmetic dentistry. He is proud to be a founding and accredited member of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry and visiting scientist at the Hebrew University School of Dental Medicine in Jerusalem, Israel, who I just sent my mother there for a 10-day trip with her girlfriends and paid for it all. And she, oh my God, she loved that. She never wanted to come back. She, she, she talks about that thing. I'm going to have to, in fact, you're reminding me to send her back. So I promised her I'd send her back and I need to call her up and say, you want to go back there again with your girlfriend? She just absolutely loved it. Dr. Feynman has also formally held teaching positions at six universities, including one as a special lecturer in aesthetic dentistry at Emory University School of Dentistry in Atlanta, Georgia. He's authored and co-authored two textbooks. That in itself is beyond amazing. Published numerous articles, lectured throughout the world on subjects of aesthetics, dental products, and operative dentistry. As a clinical research evaluator, as well as being on the board of reality and practical periodontics and aesthetics, Dr. Feynman has throughout the years been involved with the development and testing of many of the products which we use today, which I wanted to talk to you about big time. Dr. Feynman has been a spokesperson for cosmic dentistry throughout the years on CNN, WSB, WAGA, speaking as a resident expert on cosmic dentistry and other topics. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, Ron, seriously, I remember getting out of school in 1987 and uh, started taking, you know, 300 to 500 hours of CE a year and earning my fellowship mastership. I think I've seen you lecture a half dozen times. I mean, congratulations to just an amazing and outstanding career. Well, you're sweet. Uh, it scares me because uh, I, I, I'm not really doing as much as I used to. But then again, my golf went away too. So things slow up a little bit. Uh, you've been out there. I remember when we were doing stuff with Bill Dorfman uh, on this stuff uh, uh, 30 years ago in Vegas <laughs> and stuff like that. Right. I don't do that anymore. I, 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 I introduced my uh, assistant to your son. Uh, Andre Sosa is with me. Andre is a uh, dentist from Venezuela. And he's been my right hand and my eyes for 10 years. So that's part of being, going into my, this is my 50th year of, of practicing dentistry. I, to let you know that I, I do it one day a week uh, and he takes care of everything else. Uh, makes dentistry a lot easier when you have somebody like that. And, and uh, I'm, I'm blessed, I'm really blessed. Uh, and blessed to hear you doing so well. I read the magazine every once in a while. I don't do as much as we're doing now. Things have become easier as I get older. So next few months, I'll be 50 years in dentistry. Who would have thunk? Man, I don't know. That is amazing. Uh, that That is so amazing. Well, whatever hey, you want to ask me, ask me if I come. Well, we'll, we'll get to um, cosmetics, material supplies, all that stuff. But I, I want to start... Um, oh, with a question only you could really answer your uh what are you 75 then if you've been practicing 50 years yeah um i got out at 24 so that's why i figured you're probably at that age um so ron um you've seen dentistry for half a century and you know there's always been uh you know i remember 30 years ago the capitation was going to ruin dentistry i remember 30 years ago orthodontic centers of america came out and all the orthodontists thought they'd all be working at walgreens you know at a dock in the box shop how how would you say is the state of dentistry and where where is it headed is it really headed towards um all the heartlands and pacifics um um will will these big mega mergers like serona and densply getting bigger and bigger will will dentistry become just such a big business that dentists will be more like pharmacist or what, what, what do you think the, the health of the dental industry is today? Well, I'll tell you that uh, my history makes me feel that uh, dentistry as a profession is fantastic. Uh, I've got Andre here who doesn't have his license. Uh, I talked him out of going into 
school for another four thousand dollars i get two years worth of uh, foreign uh, training because there was no way that in 10 years could he make the the four hundred thousand dollar back i said do what you want to do and he is a engineer and uh, acoustical engineer and musician and he's gonna make a lot more money than dennis will i don't think dennis can make the, the income that they thought they could many many years ago uh I was thinking about what you were going to say, and uh, I have to go back 50 years. What would I do now to, to start a practice? And uh, one of the things that I would say is start out with a mentor. I would move into a city, and I would find whoever has been top in their field and stay on the, their, over their shoulder and learn as much as I can. And then find, it doesn't have to be cosmetic dentistry, but if you want to be in cosmetic dentistry, I remember about 20 years ago giving a lecture in Ontario or, or somewhere in Canada, and a dentist comes over to me, he says, you won't believe me. He says, I've been in practice for two years. I have six offices. And I said, well, what do you mean six offices? He says, yeah. He says, you know what I do? He says, I give away bleaching for free. And I thought that was terrific. Here's a guy that now has six dentists who are uh, working for him, and he's been in practice for two years. So those are the things that you have to go on. You have to stay with good companies. You have to get great laboratories. Uh, and I'm telling you about myself. I mean, I'm doing mostly Crown and Bridge. I've been doing mostly Crown and Bridge over my life. I want to tell you, I've been doing veneers, as you know, since the beginning, I have not seen a failed case yet. I've got patients walking around for 35 years with porcelain veneers that I did 35 years ago. It's still out there. I had good laboratory and good technique, and, that, and that's what a, a young kid has to do. They have to look at the, at the techniques and, uh, and use good products. So I stick with it some products you want to hear some products i do and i want to hear the list that you said you said you got to stick with good companies and good labs so what yeah. are the good companies and their products and what are the good labs and their products and their technicians all right all right all right uh, have you been to wanna walk i've been to where oh 3m yeah yeah to the wanna walk you've yes. been there yeah well in, in 74 i was there and Tell, tell them, tell, tell the listeners what that is. That, that's 3M's place for. All right. 3M has 600 acres in Northern Minnesota. And, uh, I forget who was it. I forgot who was leading the, the conference. They pick out 20 dentists a year to go to this conference. Now, this is a conference that's in the, out with three lakes and the uh, golf range and shooting range, everything. And uh, I, of course, went, went to uh, the headquarters, which is uh, in Minnesota. And <laughs> we sat there for two, two days looking at all their research. They've got more stuff in reserve and patented than they can ever use and we'll ever see. So then we went up to Wanawak, and Wanawak, we had to get, it was easy. You went on a, a bus that was fully loaded with booze and went to the airport, and they had 10 G5s lined up in their fleet. And four at a time got on these private jets, and we flew up for 20 minutes up to Wanawak. And we got off the plane, got on a bus, and uh, I didn't know where I was going. I had no idea what this was. Oh, Richard Simonson was ahead of that. You know Richard? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so I, okay, so I got off the plane, and I'm walking up to the, the main headquarters, and there's a guy cutting the bushes next to the sidewalk. And he looks up at me and says, hey, Dr. Feynman, how you doing? I said, I thought it was my brother. I didn't know who he was. Well, they train these people to know who you are, to know what your booze is, know what you enjoy. And uh, that was six days of fantastic things. But the best thing of that trip was they brought out Reliax. 
Now I had used zinc phosphate cement and uh, uh, all sorts of various looting agents until I started using Reliax, all right, as a, a resin glass ionoma. And I was using glass ionomas then, but every once in a while, I would have a tooth that would blow up or I would have a D-bond. In 25 years, I've not had any teeth that I've seeded, crowns that I've seeded to blow up on me and have to get endodontics. It may be technique, but I'm gonna tell you, it's, it's, it's how we seat those crowns and what kind of crowns we use. And uh, that was the best part of one walk. I mean, besides getting good fishing and, and seeing some great entertainment, it was uh, the Relax and, and 3M. 3M is a great product. I mean, it just works well. And uh, what's my other, other favorite company? Oh, Ultra wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, ask you a question. Um, who was the real little short lady who was the lead researcher on that? Uh, do you remember her name? I don't remember. Uh, Sumitra. I don't remember names anymore. I think I think it was Sumitra. I don't remember. You, but you know, you know I why I'm, her. you know why I'm so familiar yeah. with her. My sister, my oldest sister, uh, Mary Kay, who's now sister Anne, is in a convent up the street, and to go visit her to make that a uh, tax write off, I have to yeah. go spend four hours and one minute of business. So I would fl either go to 3M or Patterson and spend four hours and one minute at 3M's research center, or I'd go sit in the uh, the office yeah. with the president, uh, uh, Pete Frechette, and uh, the, the 3M was just amazing. They, those, pe those research people in white lab coats with PhDs were so amazingly, brilliantly genius. I mean, it's amazing. What did you think of 3M buying SV um, um, years back? Uh, what did you think of that merger well, and acquisition? Listen, uh, 3M is gonna keep them straight. They're gonna have, products that overlap. Uh, I mean, I, you know, if I find a product that works, I stay with it. I mean, I've developed a bunch of products and uh, my patents have run, run out. I've, I've outgrown them, but uh, I still, uh, that was part of dentistry for me to be able to uh, bring in polyvinyl from discus that was mine. And uh, uh, what are the patents I have on uh, Brassler? Uh, depth cutters and stuff. That's what young dentists need to do. If they find a product or a tool that works for them, they need to work on, develop it and take it to the companies and let them do the, their, their work. It's hard to do these days, but if you've got some good ideas, they want it. Well, you know, Mike Natola, who's now the dental director of uh, Serona Dent Supply, yeah. um, he, he was saying if, if three-fourths of all lab technicians say they didn't give me enough reduction on this prep three out of four times the lab man didn't get enough reduction why do you think depth burrs never take off i mean why do you dentists continue to eyeball it um when when you know every lab man will say three out of four times you don't give me enough room well it depends on what you're talking about with the veneers we knew that we had to or felt that we had to take off a half millimeter of enamel. Now, the average thickness of enamel is in certain areas 1.2 millimeters. So we developed depth cutters that would take off that amount and then we wipe off those little grooves. Now we knew we had enough room for, for the veneers and the laboratories don't criticize for that. Now with crown and bridge, it's a different story. You know, when we went to school, before you went to school and I went to school, they had a round diamond, a number four round diamond, and that was your depth cutter. Take it off. And there shouldn't be any problems with that. And I will tell you something. I'm going to give you another golden rule that I really never do. I was brought up always with high-end dentistry. High-end men's laboratory costs were incredible. And they still are today. They had, you're talking about four to five hundred dollars a crown for the expertise quote unquote for the for the laboratory. You go to Da Vinci, you go to Laura Keller, you go to uh, Pincus Adar. You know, you're gonna have beautiful, beautiful porcelain that works. But I have found a laboratory, and I, I'm willing to share it with you. I get my porcelain, my um, Zircon crowns 
less than eighty dollars, maybe ninety dollars a unit. In ten years in using this laboratory, Howard, I am not kidding. I have not had, and Andre will tell you, I have not had to adjust contact, occlusion, and fit. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of crowns. Color. I do the same thing I do everywhere else, but this laboratory is incredible. I have a feeling that they they do it in, in Florida and they do it in China. It doesn't make any difference to me. I like Chinese food, but uh, <laughs> it comes back on time and it fits. It fits. It's incredible. What do you think, Andres? That's right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Well, what's uh, the name? Of the, what's the name of the lab? <clears throat> what's uh, the W? Well, oh, I don't know if I can divulge it. Oh, it's DDS down in Florida. Uh, DDS. What's the W? What's the URL? www.dds what? DDS Lab Solutions. DDS, DDS Ab Solutions. Lab Solutions. Oh, Lab Solutions. That was yeah. a Catholic boy coming out of me saying Absolution. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I'm, DDS I'm lab, lab Solutions. Lab Solutions. I got to get rid of that W. Um, and, and do you know the owner? I don't know them. I really don't. I thought you knew everyone. Uh, well, I'd rather stay away from them. I mean, you know, I want to be just a client. I mean, I don't, I don't ask them. You know, we give them, we always give them good photographs of, of before, after preparation. Uh, we always know that our tissue is in great shape. Uh, I haven't had to use uh, retraction cord in 15 years. I don't need it. I want that tissue to be clean and healthy. You take a little laser on, on your tissue or you just use, uh, if you have bleeding, I mean, there's nothing better than Ultradens uh, Visco uh, Gel, uh, the hemostatic agent that you use. To me, that Ultradens material is, is the best post-preparation material. You know, I can remember 30 years ago when I met Dan Fisher and he actually demoed that by cutting in his own forearm, making it bleed. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now listen, up in Montana, Dan and I were doing a course together <laughs> and we had 10 dentists lined up on a table, sitting, waiting to watch. And he always used to use an IV and bleed himself to use his own blood. And he missed this time. He squirted everybody with his blood. They scrambled as if there was a bomb in the place, like there was AIDS going to be around. They, they, I never seen anything like it. You ask Dan, he remember that. That is hilarious. That guy, that guy is so passionate. How old do you think Dan is now? Dan's, well, he, how many children? He's got 15 children, doesn't he? I don't know. He <laughs> has more energy than anyone I know. I mean, what I remember, I like, I ran into him in Cologne, and I, you know, it's, it's a five-hour flight yeah. from Phoenix to New York, nine to Germany. I got yeah. there. I'm almost dead. And he and he had flown in, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. He had more energy at 6 a.m. I mean, the guy is just unbelievable energy. Still going. And he's got a great message, and there is not a bad product from Ultradens. Any product that they have, I will bet on it. Their, their composite, their, uh, their light, they have a new light out that's uh, faster than anything out there that works very, very well. I mean, uh, Dan's, Dan's fantastic. Well, and Warren, I think my other- Warren, Warren Buffett always says that he, that he won't buy a company unless the CEO has high intelligence, high energy, and high integrity, and Dan Fisher, has all of those in spades, and so do you. I mean, 75 years old, been practicing for 50 years. I mean, I think you are a legend. How to pay my bills. <laughs> you know? So one day is enough. That's all I need. But uh, my message is, I, I think we're, the average, average dentist that's on his own has got to be, talking about being on, we'll talk about that. Uh, he's sucked in with these high laboratory fees. Now, Dan Matadomini and, uh, and Laura Keller are not gonna like me, hearing me say this, but you know, if you've got a charge of $500 for the laboratory fee, you've got to triple that to make any income in your office. 
So if you can get your laboratory fees then and get a quality product, that's what you need to do. And and there's no need to have that. Is, but, Laura, uh, is Laura Kelly still um, running uh, micro, micro dental in San Francisco? No, Larry, she has her own laboratory. Oh, really? What's what's her new lab? Do, do Laura still, Kelly. Laura Kelly. <clears throat> what's her URL? Just just. LK Dental. LK Dental. Man, I haven't, I haven't seen her in a long time. Or do you still talk she's to her? Ter she's terrific. I saw her or I talked to her oh about a year ago. She's got a great, great laboratory. LKDental.com. Yeah. Well, I gotta, I gotta look her up. She is an amazing woman too. Yeah. So anyway. But she always, she always kind of targeted. I mean, she when she was with Microdental, I mean, she was virtually targeting uh, Bill Dickerson's group, LVI. Who, by the way, Bill Dickerson's group is having their twentieth uh, uh, anniversary party this weekend in Vegas. And are you uh, going? Well, you know, I thought about it, but uh, I, I, uh, I got a triathlon uh, Ironman, my third one coming up in uh, November fifteenth. The last thing I need is to skip a weekend of training while uh, drinking and partying in Vegas for three days. Uh, that would, uh, that would probably not be uh, good for my schedule. Well, yeah, I remember all the issues that came up with Bill and uh, the. Uh, the other thing that uh, I'm not saying that everybody has to be a cosmetic, but uh, uh, you're talking about uh, the uh, American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. Every one of your people should get a membership because they really put their wings around you. Either that or uh, ASDA, which is uh, Erwin Smigel's group. Now, there's a great guy, by the way. You still talk to Erwin? Uh, I talk to him once a year. I see him at his meeting every once in a while. But uh, you talk about learning things. Uh, if I were a dentist starting out, I mean, you're going to learn a lot of stuff in the ADA, but you'll get more out of dentistry in, in these little groups in AACD. Uh, they help you out a lot. And you're going to see, you know, you talk, you talk to me about laboratory, you talk about uh, uh, companies, uh, Another one that I think about, Brasler. Brasler Peter Brasler, too. he was an amazing man. What a he guy. Was yes, he was. I, I uh, actually miss him. How many years ago did he pass away? I would say about 15. 15? He was, God, that was, he was an amazing man. Yeah, and he was a great guy. And, uh, I mean, we put a lot of uh, diamonds out with them and uh, still using them. So these are these are the the company you stick you stick with these these big companies I think you, they're going to be fine, but I have uh listen uh there's new things that are out now uh, it hasn't caught uh, much on the uh, east coast as the west coast is uh, Canberra. 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 Yeah, that's a big deal in uh, San Francisco. Well, yeah, but they they haven't. I mean. Dentists don't understand it. Uh, I mean, I'm an old time dentist, but uh, Kim Cooch and his company, Carries Free, has made a big impact in my practice. Um, a lot of my patients who are uh, over the 50 years of age are taking medication, have dry mouth, and we're seeing big, big Carries problems. And also, besides Carries from dry mouth, you're seeing a lot. I have a lot of uh, Coca-Cola people uh, and, you know, I used to pre treat the president of Coca-Cola and, and vice president. I have a couple of vice presidents now and I tell them Diet Coke is screwing everybody up. I even heard on television this morning. Uh, what's her name? What's the blonde girl on uh, the talk show? Uh, Kelly Ripper. Kelly Ripper. <laughs> Kelly Ripper. Cute girl. I'm going to tell you a name you don't even Come know. Come on, at our, at our age, Ron, they're all cute. Come on, you're well, 75. When's the well, last time well, you've seen a girl that wasn't right, cute? Lives next door to my best friend, <clears throat> Alan Finkelstein in New York. He is the guru of insurance for United Healthcare. And Kelly was talking about dentistry on our program, talking about Alan. Absolutely incredible. But... I will tell you that uh, she started talking about uh, what are, what are, uh, Altoids 
And Altoids, as you know, are poison for dentistry. You're talking about like meth mouth, any patient that's using Altoids and we have rampant caries. So I'm giving you 50 years of research on that. My cocoa people <coughs> don't understand that it's not the sugar. Most dentists don't understand. It's the carbonation. Carbonation is acid. It's causing all this bacteria in your mouth. And uh, this carries free has this machine out that uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, with where you swab the mouth and you can uh, get the number of ATB, ATP blocks of from the bacteria and give you like a, a number. Are you familiar with the machine? Are, are you talking about Kim Kuch's machine? Kim, yeah. Kim, yeah. You know why he is? Um, he would do so much good if he'd make an online CE course on that on Dental Time. I need to get him on a podcast, and I need to get him to do an, an hour uh, course. How often do you talk to Kim? You talked to him recently? I saw him at a wedding, uh, uh, at Bill Brown's wedding. You know Bill Brown from Yes, uh, absolutely. Violates. Absolutely. His daughter got married about a month ago, and we were all out there down down here in Atlanta, so it was easy. But uh, did, you, did you like her future ex-husband? Is he a good guy? I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bad, bad, dumb joke. But uh, yeah, I, I think um, karyology and the science of it and understanding carbonation and how the, P, the, the low pH of Diet Coke coming in at four is so helpful for streptococcus mutans when the mouth should be a neutral pH. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. And, and what's also amazing is how they're discovering a new bacteria in the mouth every three months. They're discovering a new species in the mouth. Well, Howard, who would have thought, I mean, that patients would accept these numbers. I mean, I've had, I mean, if I gave them litmus, litmus paper, they see acid, that would mean anything. But you tell them how much a gas is costing them in, in their car, and if they see the numbers and understand it, and if you have a person like Andres who explain this whole situation, you get your hygienists to do it. They come back and they understand it. They don't blame you anymore. I've had a lot of those, not a lot, but many red flag patients. Uh, you know, you know what red flag is. Uh, talk about everything, but uh, they accept those numbers to be true. And they will get on the on the mouthwash, even though it's drinking pool water, it's chlorine, uh, it works. And uh, we're very, very happy with it. I would like Kim Cooch to, to do some other stuff. He hasn't done it. Uh, I will get him to do something with you. Uh, you know, he just needs to have the exposure. Uh, I don't know why it's just in and, California. And, and, and you know, I wish, <clears throat> I wish uh, Kim would take it a further step because... I can go into a practice and increase the recall by a third just by explaining to every woman who comes in every three to six months whose husband hasn't come in. It's like, you know, below the belt, you can pass diseases. Why do you think you can get your teeth clean every three to six months, brush and floss every morning and night, and then when you kiss your husband and trade saliva, how do you not understand that you're trading an infection? And it, it blows my mind yeah. how, uh, um, and we, when you tell any patients that, they're like, really? And it's like, well, you know, below the belt, you can get pregnant and gonorrhea and herpes and AIDS. How do you, why, why does Americans, why do earthlings not realize that the mouth is any different? I mean, it blows my mind how you'll see dentists treat a woman every three months for gum disease and it won't go away. And they've never seen her husband. He hasn't had his teeth cleaned in 10 years. And he's got a bombed out number two and gum disease. And she's sitting there kissing him every night. Well, you bring that up, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll be happy. So anyway, uh, we were talking about fees. And that brings me up to, I was giving a lecture at the, the ACD on fees. And uh, some fellow said, well, why do you have a range of fees? And I said, well, I had two fees. I have a six-inch fee and a 12-inch fee. 
if they, they didn't understand what was going on, I said, yeah, if the patient holds a mirror six inches away from the mouth is one thing. Oh, that is clutch. All right. So I'm the only one that has two feet scale. <laughs> that is clutch. I love it. Because some people's their their needs are so high, they're so high maintenance. So we, I have a cosmetic AACD guy up the street, and he's always like profusely thanking me for sending him some of these veneer cases, and he has no idea. I mean, I tell him, but I mean, I only send him the batshit crazy women who are coming in and they're have their mirror right in their face, and they're telling me all this stuff, and it's like, my God, there's not enough money in China for me to do this case, and he 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 loves to deal with That's them. Right. Yeah. Well, I I am dating a a Catholic girlfriend who was my patient 30 years ago. I had no attraction to her until I got divorced. And then, but uh, she needed a full reconstruction and uh, had a lot of money. And I'm looking at it and she's starting to ask me this, this, or this. And I'm, I'm starting to add up and I, I overcharge her. I mean, I overcharge her. And uh, after I got through the case, I finished it up with no problems whatsoever. About two weeks later, I sent a check for $5,000. I want to tell you something. I made a good friend, and I, do, I used to do that when I had my own practice. Uh, I don't practice, but I'm, you know, I'm in a group practice now, and uh, uh, I like group practice. Uh, if you ask me any difference between being solo and being in a group practice, there is a big difference. I love to have my colleagues look at what I do because I don't trust myself. I want to make sure that everything is perfect. So when I'm out of the office, they get to check it and everything is good. It's like being in school. You, and, and you know, I had dinner, um, I had dinner uh, last Thursday night with the first associate I hired, Bob Savage, and I hired him right when I opened my practice. Uh, yeah. I thought it was just professionally lonely to be the only dentist in the I mean, you didn't have your, where's your classmate, your schoolmate? And he was the same age. He was just out of school. And yeah. that, that was the most fun thing about driving to work is seeing Bob and then later Sam Dominic and Tom Giacobbe. And I yeah. think that's why I started Dental Town, just because when I saw the internet, I just thought, well, we don't have to be professionally lonely anymore. I mean, it was so tough to go home, take your dentist hat off, and then play with a, a Tonka truck in a sandbox. And, and nobody that loved you could understand, you know, your root canal questions. And they, you like to have somebody patting you on the shoulder every once in a while. And, uh, and, uh, listen, I'll, I'll let them look at whatever I have. And, uh, you know, when you have internet now, uh, in your practice, uh, everybody can pick up on all, all your befores and answers, all your x-rays after post-op and, and pre-op and, and could be judgmental and, uh, which is good. It's a good thing. That's, says a lot for the American Academy of group practices, I guess. Uh, it works both ways. I, I, I practiced by myself for 10 years, but uh, I've, I've always been in a good, good group of people. And I've, uh, when I decided to merge my practice rather than selling it, uh, couldn't get the money I wanted selling it. So I, I merged it with uh, I, the, the best practice in the Southeast is uh, Atlanta Center of Cosmetic Dentistry. It's Deborah King and uh, Charlie Cooper. I mean, good, good dentists. And, uh, and I've, I've gotten at least 10 different email requests for me to podcast Deborah King. Um, and and I, I would love to. And you know, you know what the, you know what, you know what the, my number one, in fact, my, my only complaint on the podcast, unless we have technical sound issues or yeah. something like that, it's always that how come whenever you interview a dentist, it's a man, and whenever you interview a woman, she's a consultant or a hygienist, and these graduating classes are half women, and they don't like it when a, me, the short, fat, white, bald right, guy, now, is always interviewing other uh, old white I'll guys. I'll tell you who to go to, Joyce Bassett. She lives up the street from me, and she's scared. She, she, oh, she's camera I, shy. Oh. My, me, I had dinner with her at her house two weeks ago. She just lives about 30 minutes up the street, and I'm telling her, come on, Joyce. She's like... I don't know. What are you going to ask me? And it's like, you know, but she, she's no, camera no, no. shy. To her. I talk to her a lot. Uh, I spent uh, a week with her about five years ago. And, uh, just had a great time with Joyce has been a wonderful asset. Now she's president of ACD. First, the first woman president. And that's why I told right. her, I said, you know, Neil Armstrong can't deny he was the first man on the moon. You can't, I said, Joyce, you cannot deny you're the first woman dentist ever to be the president of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, and you're now in a leadership, you're a role model, 
And these dental schools that are half women, they need to see people like you. They need to hear from you. They, they, I, don't want, I don't want these kids in dental school seeing all the leaders as men. That's why I want to get Deborah, uh, Deborah on. That's why I want to get Joyce on. That, that's why I drove 30 minutes to have dinner with her at her house with my son, Ryan, just to try yeah. to sell her on the idea. <laughs> Ryan, are you still working on her? I'll sell her. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Joyce. Uh, and that's, uh, you know. And if she doesn't, and if she's worried about what questions I'm going to ask her, just, I told her, just give me the questions. I'll state a script. You just tell me what to ask you. Let's give her my interview and and, and that'll do be fine with her. You know, you, you know you're not why, getting you know tired why, down. She's, you, you know why I never had a problem public speaking is I remember my dad, um, the true story. He, uh, um, one time, we were taking my Schwinn bicycle. Remember Schwinn back in the day when that was like the uh, I had, had the spring in the front. Yeah, and uh, we my tire had a flat, so he pops his the trunk back then the Lincoln Town Car. You know, you could put a ten speed bicycle in it with the kickstand down and close the lid. I mean, you yeah. literally could fit our riding lawnmower in it. And I took it to the Schwinn dealership, and he just popped the trunk and. Uh, and uh, I went and got my bike out, and I said, "Why aren't you coming in?" He goes, "No, you take it in." I said, "Well, what did I tell him?" And he's like, "Howard." Well, what did you tell me? You got a, you got a flat tire. He goes, he goes, go in there and tell him you're clean clitoral hopper and you need your tennis racket restrung. I go, yeah. what? <laughs> he, go, he goes, Howard, if you're a, he, go, he goes, this is what he said to me. He goes, there's 7 billion people on earth and not one of them right now is thinking about you. So quit worrying what people think about you because no one is ever thinking about you. Everyone thinks everyone else is thinking about them and they're not. He goes, just go tell him what you told me. And, and that eliminated my fear because then I realized, you know, when you take a shower in the morning, there, there's no one on earth thinking of you. So why are you afraid to go say something or do an interview or whatever? And when people are going to listen to Joyce, they're not thinking about Joyce. They're thinking about um, what they can learn from Joyce for their own life and their own self. Well, Joyce is, uh, well, I was there when Jack Hammer was there, you know, Remember the Jack? founder? He was the founder yeah. of the ACD. We went to Vegas for the for the founding meeting. I was a founder there, and uh, that goes back a long time. You know, that's because the, the uh, uh, I hope this doesn't show out to. That's when the the Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry wouldn't allow you to come in unless you were a clinician. Then we decided that you know cosmetic dentistry is for everyone, and 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 now it works out real well. Anybody can do it. It's no big deal. Everybody's supposed to be a cosmetic dentist. Everybody is. I mean, you don't put purple restorations on uh, on teeth, but uh, everybody has to have the color. And, and I will tell you, talking about these young kids, I didn't want to be a dentist. I wanted to be a physician, but I didn't have the grades. So I went to University of Alabama, and then I went to uh, – Dental school, I said, well, why not try it out? My dad, May Rissom Pease, was a very, very, very amazing person who is very, very successful in business and had a multi-million dollar business for me down in Alabama. And I said, no, I'm going to go to school. And uh, I went to school, and uh, that was a, that was an experience. Uh, you know, to go to Alabama, roll tide, you couldn't do anything better than that. And uh, I think that... Uh, these young kids that are coming out now, they have great, you asked me, they, they have great opportunities. They have, they can uh, join these organizations, doesn't take any tests to join an organization and learn. And jo people like Joyce Bassett will find you a place in that organization. And uh, my best friend, I mean, these people are paranoid. We are, we are all paranoid. You know, as if you're going to take patience away from us. It doesn't, you're not going to take patience away. Jeff Golub and I, my wonderful best friend who you know, who passed away about six years ago or five years ago, couldn't, no, three years ago. He and I were so close and he called me up. He says, we need to start. We, we were both on the board of directors of ACD. And Jeff said, you know, I've been talking to corporate. And uh, he says, well, you and I are going to start the Smile Design Council to be able to talk to these uh, uh, designers in fashion. So we started it. We, we incorporated it. And the word came out that ACD, you know what? They threw us off the board. They, was, they were so paranoid. 
for somebody else doing something. And uh, that's the kind of people you got to be aware of. Got, the, the people that are up there, people like Joyce and ACD, are willing to help young kids out. In Alpha Omega, which I was an international president of, I started out the uh, internship program 40 years ago to get young dentists to go into top offices in, in the world, Paris, uh, Bernard Twati's office, who is uh, Gorbachev, not Gorbachev, uh, Putin's dentist, uh, French, Frenchman is a Putin's den dentist, but uh, to get these guys into, into a big office and let them learn what we do and share with them. I mean, nobody's gonna take any business away from you. So do you but anyway, still, are what you else still, do you want to know from me? Do you, do you still uh, are friends with Putin's dentist? Yeah. What's his name? Bernard Tawati. Spell it. B-E-R-N-A-R-D. That's the easy part. Bernard. E -U -A Bernard Tawati. T-A-U-A-T-I. He copied us as a cosmetic dentist of Europe. When we brought in veneers... Uh, he was best friends with Ronnie Goldstein, and he actually copied our tools and everything and thought he was the uh, de developer of veneers. I cannot think of anything more radical than doing a podcast interview with Putin's dentist. Do you have his email address? Uh, I can find it. Oh, send it to me. Send it to me at Howard at Dentaltown.com. That would be a riot. To interview a French dentist who is Putin's dentist. He also is pa Kate Middleton's dentist. Who's that? Bernard Twati. No, who's Kate Middleton? Princess Milton, Kate. Huh. I am not on top of my princesses. No, she's the British. Oh, you mean the... Uh... Princess Diane's daughter. Oh, Kate. my God. Yeah, who just had her second baby, right? Yep. Man, America's in love with the royal family. I'll never forget when Princess Di died. It was the same time as my personal hero, Mother Teresa Calcutta died, who got the Nobel Peace Prize in uh, 1969. Yeah. And uh, when you grow up a Catholic boy, you know, she was just the number one role model idol. And uh, Lady Di was on page one for a year, and Mother Teresa was on page nine, and it was just a little bitty, little bitty story. And I thought, wow, that's uh, Amer America. Well, what it meant to me is that America relates a lot more to a lady who uh, had all of her troubles and got married, divorced. All they they relate to that. Nobody relates to a Catholic nun. I mean, I know my two oldest sisters are Catholic nuns, and people just don't relate to them. And, and I'm glad to see you're dating a Catholic girl. Your guilt should be increasing daily now. Do you feel guilty about just doing this podcast? No, not at all. I'm, I'm, I, have a, I, have, I have some patients that are, are uh, very, very, very religious. Uh, they go out and visit the Pope once a year, and this guy is a mega millionaire who has a chapel in each one of his office buildings, and the brothers come in and, and do a service every day for his employees in Catholic brothers well do you know that's pretty heavy duty the reason i have so much self-esteem and self-confidence is because my mother every time i did something great she said howie you're so smart when you grow up you're going to be the first american pope all the popes are italians but you're going to be the first american pope and i believed her till i was 16 and met my first girlfriend and then i forgot all about it but hey, I want to I want to go back to uh, and that was a shout out to uh, to Jane, uh, my first uh, high school thing. Um, I want to go back to you've been, you you said you've had veneer cases that lasted 25, 30 years, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're seventy five, done this for half a century. There's kids out there right now who're saying, get specific, Ron, get get to the meat, and I I know what they're going to tell me. Tell me what cement should I use? to cement a, uh, a full gold crown or a full zirconia crown? And when would you cement an all porcelain crown like zirconia versus when would you bond it? Are you bonding on your crowns or are you cementing? And we're talking about the most common crown in America is a first molar. So veneers are rare, we'll get to that, but for the most common crown in the United States, a first molar, 
would you do an all porcelain cos you're a cosmetic dentist founder would you use zirconia or is that not cosmetic enough for you would you use email what would you use and what would you submit it with be specific zirconia i do it every day for every restoration and i do not bond it i use rely x as my cement but i put on custom made provisionals which actually andres does for me you know i i i do the surgery i i do the the preparations and and get it ready and then take them and then i say it's yours and andres provisionalize them so every margin is clear and i don't go sub circular i am right at the gingival crest i'm not I don't have any bleeding in my cases most of the time. If, if they're bleeding, they're going to go over to see my periodontist, uh, Laura Braswell. And Laura is uh, one of the, oh, or he, wait, 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 here's somebody else that you need to interview. Laura Braswell is, a, is the number one in my book, laser periodontist. She's got those periodontists all upset. Now, Laura and I did a crown on the, the elephant at the Atlanta Zoo 25 years ago. Now, I don't know how many guys have put a crown on a, uh, a tusk of an elephant, but I did. And, uh, and she is the dentist for the Atlanta Zoo. She's got a great CV. She was partners with Mike Fritz, who was Dean of Emory. And uh, I, she's one of the best periodontists in the Southeast. Well, tell her I want to I wanna interview her. Well, you would love her. But you know, the dentist who, uh, um, Dr. Sam Dominic, who put a crown on me, he tells everybody he put a crown on an elephant. <laughs> hey, um, but go, well, but go back. Same. My, no, my, my job, you know that. Yeah. my job is to, uh, mo most dentists, um, it, it, mo most patients find it very interesting when you tell them that an elephant's tusk is actually their lateral incisor. It's just an upper tooth. Right. And, uh. Uh, I, when I was in uh, school, I actually thought it was a canine, but later I found out it was a lateral incisor. But I, I, I'm, my job is to guess the questions of 7,000 dentists listening to you, most all of which are listening to you on sound on iTunes through their car on their commute to work. And I know somebody's out there asking, why do you cement them? Why do you not bond them? Why do you not take the advantage of bonding the crown? Why do you just cement um, a Bruxer? Or what did you say, Zirconia? Why do you cement it and not bond it? Yeah, because I don't feel, and many times the reduction is more than you want because of carries, where, where it's too much reduction, I do a buildup. But if you don't do a buildup, then you're going to go ahead and put, and I, I've, I've been in too many discussions with people about uh, putting a, a acid on, on the pulp and uh, I've I, <laughs> I forget who what is it. John I Kanka. went into a Kanka was the first one saying acid it's the dentin. Remember remember back in the day when everybody was saying you have to keep the acid off the dentin and going I to crazy and measures and Kanka was showing all these slides right. with acid right. all over the dentin. I know, and uh I got into those arguments with them, but then they they quieted me down. But with Reliax, all I do is neutralize the preparation you had cement on the temporary cement you can clean that off and you can use composite i mean uh, uh pumice and a rubber cup if you want to and then i use a uh, peroxide and uh consepsis i flush those preparations i actually sterilize them and then i dry them off block them off and then i use my rely x unisem right there and we trim it all the way and we don't have problems we don't have debonding and we don't have uh sensitivity tell how would i did a case tell I'm, i know someone's asking um dr Feynman, what is consepsis who makes it what 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 is that all about chlorhexidine i think uh uh dan fisher has it yeah ultra ultra dense Okay, and the, and the big question on consepsis that I see on the message board is um, chlorhexane, isn't that um, an oil that sticks to the tooth? Would that interfere with the cementation, the bonding, anything? No, it's neutral. Not at all. Okay. 
No, you, I'm telling you. So that's, that's the simple. Simple is the best. When you get into etching and putting dealers in there and bonding agents, that's adding resistance to seating your crown. You don't know if it pools in a crack and that's where you have issues. So keep it, keep it clean, keep it simple. And uh, a lot of, a lot of times, you know, this is the first time that I've been interviewed. Not first iPod cast number one. Really? I'm your first. You're my first. Oh, yes, I, that, oh, that just made my day. What is it as good for you as it was for me? It was. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, when I drive uh, back to the office, I'm going to probably run 20 red lights because, uh, no, seriously, that, that is a huge honor to be the first no, guy to podcast. I, I've not talked about dentistry for an hour without slides. So you're changing my mood. Uh, that's one of the reasons I got out of lecturing. I, I had 2,000 35 millimeter slides of cases and uh, I didn't want to put them on computer and I just got rolled up by te technology and uh, we're fine. I still my, got my pictures. I've got some great cases that I I should really publish. Uh, well, you know what but, you should do? You should digitize them forever by creating an online course on Dental Town. If, if you, those slides, we, we put up 325 courses. They've been viewed over half a million times. And if, and it's so easy to do. All you gotta do is upload those slides. Uh, your partner can help you do that. Then you just, you just call and you can do a voiceover. But if you, you could sit there on yeah. your couch with all those slides uploaded, give your lecture, and I swear, once you put that up on the internet, it'll be there for a thousand years. I, I, I think it would be a great waste of all those cases. Well, Andres likes to hear that. Yeah, it would, mean, it would just be a complete just, colossal waste. We have just, we had just finished a case. Uh, you're not gonna believe this, I'm not blowing wind, but 30 units in one patient, full coverage on the, uh, 24 of them in six veneers. Now he was, he looked like he had a meth mouth. He looked like he had lost all his enamel. He had a flat plane of occlusion. He was suffering from uh, headaches and, and uh, what kind of headaches? Uh, migraine. migraine headaches. His clinical history had uh, methamphetamine um, methamphetamine yeah. methamphetamine taking it daily and uh, uh, taking uh, narcotics and all stuff like that I I was on the line with his physician every day to see what's going on we prepped and impressed his entire mouth half mouth upper and lower with regular anesthetic took our impressions seated everything he never had a pain never had a skipping occlusion. Now, yeah, we take records, but uh, it's amazing that uh, if, you, if you, you take your time and do your stuff, it works out real well. This is a guy that just is a happy camper now. And, you know, I thought he was doing Altoids, but. But Ron, uh, think about this. Think about this. You've been doing yeah. dentistry for half a century. And it's, let's say you were to go to a Catholic church with your new girlfriend and were struck by lightning and killed. It would all just never be seen again. It would just be gone. And uh, you really need to get that on the internet. If you put that on downtown, we have 205,000 dentists. You would be, you from that couch, you would be teaching dentists in Kathmandu and Syria and Yemen from, from that couch. I mean, it, it, I really think you got to do it. Well, we'll talk about that. You know, just uh, okay. So I want I want to switch. I, I, you, make, I, you make it too easy. Well, I do. I make my my whole goal is with dentistry and dental town and everything is that you know when you're in America, you know Henry Ford is the first one to say if you make really nice stuff for rich people, you you aim on the classes, you'll be so poor you'll eat with the masses. But in America, if you can make it faster, easier, higher quality, lower cost, then my whole business model has always been lowest cost, and I try to do that in my dental office at today's dental. Um, I try to do that at uh, Dental Town. You know, it's free. Yeah. Podcasts are free. Uh, you know, I and and the online courses where we charge money. I mean, they're like they're like eighteen dollars. And 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 Dennis will say, um, you know, 
thank you for making it so affordable. And we also don't charge anybody. And there's 206 countries. We only charge people for CE in rich countries. We don't charge them in uh, poor countries. Uh, and in fact, when I went to one dental school um, in um, Nepal, I mean, the dean literally, she literally cried when she saw me. She was so grateful for all these courses and everything on Dental Town. And she just kept telling me, you have no idea. You have no idea. That's all we do is look at these courses and cases and and uh, and you could be lecturing to all the dental students in Kathmandu, which are all pretty much beautiful Nepalese women, and they're all they do is giggle in class. They just sit around, look at Dental Town, and giggle. It is so, it was so fun to see. But I want to switch know. gears. I want to switch gears. You talked about cementing a crown on a first molar, and and you talked about why you don't bond. Okay, now switch gears completely. Uh, you can't cement a veneer. What do you bond a veneer on with on anterior teeth? With uh, 3M veneer cement and bonding agent. You know the uh, name of it? Relax veneer. It's Relax veneer cement and bonding agent. Relax veneer cement. And uh, out of all the cements, you prefer that one the most? Always for 20, since 1994. That's when it came out. Now, they didn't have the, the veneer cement then. They had crown and bridge cement. And then they made Relyx re, 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 uh, veneer cement after that. But And they used to, in 1994, didn't they used to call it, that was when they changed it. Wasn't it Vitramir or they, Vitrabond and Vitramir? And then Vitrabond the, is a glass ionomer cement. Vitrabond was, but Vitramir was the, was the cement, wasn't it? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. And then the next time I ordered I, it, it was Relyx. Copper band with compound impressions you know what that is heck yeah i used to do that in 80 in 84 85 86. i don't even know yeah, if you these, can buy them anymore these kids just don't know oh ron we got to bring that them. technique back we have to bring it to i haven't used those in a decade and you would just crimp the uh copper and you'd cut it and you'd mold it to the tooth it was the perfect billet it was a buildup where after you did it, you almost didn't even have to prep the tooth back. It was, uh, you molded the cut. That, that technique is so amazing. Uh, that needs to be brought back. Do you, do you have a lecture on that? Do you have some slides on that? No. That was before the I camera? Don't even have, I don't even think I have a picture of that anymore. Yeah, that was a great technique. Did you ever do a gold foil? Of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had to get my Florida license. <laughs> so uh, I still think those should come back. And you know why? Because Phoenix is a lot of retired people from the northern Midwest, you know, north and yeah. South Dakota, Minnesota. If they're west of the Mississippi, they come here to Phoenix to retire snowbirds. And they're east, they go to Florida. And those gold foils, there's, I, it's, it's a microbiological effect because they're open margins. You can see gaps in them and they're 50 years old. And then you see a next tooth where you sit there and do this beautiful bonded class five restoration. And three, five years later, it's already got recurrent decay around the margins. There's something massively antibacterial about high noble gold foils, because no matter how big the gaps and margins are, they're still there 50 years later. And I'm thinking right now of this Alzheimer's patient that I know and have and see, um, and her gold work, all of her gold work is fine because she has no home care. She doesn't know her name, any of that stuff. Yeah. And all of her composites and PFMs have failed recurrent decay in a big, huge way. But that high noble gold work is still sitting there. And when I look in that mouth, I mean, it's just so apparent that gold is bacterial static. High all energy, right. shiny what gold. About, what about eugenol and... What did we put then into root canals to blacken the tooth? Eugenol and silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. Got rid of all the decay you wanted. You yeah. can take it. To, you see, they so, forgot about that. And silver nitrate, I think, is making a comeback. There's Pete and Honest on Dental Town talking. If you're not putting this underneath your fillings on little kids, you're crazy because they're, they're already, all the old guys like us are saying, when we put this underneath the filling, it killed everything, and so it lasts longer. And I, I think dentists see dentistry like a civil engineer. They go to build a barn, and they, they, they build it so the barn won't fall down, but the barn always comes down from termites, right. 
and and dentists are biologists we're not engineers and once we could just get the dentist going from i'm an architect building a bridge to i'm a biologist how can i kill these bugs and restore this tooth with stuff that bugs hate um dentistry and then quit kissing people and making out with people that are filled with bugs i.e your husband who hasn't been to the dentist in 10 years and uh and dentistry will will take another giant leap forward well you can big program on getting your spouse to the dentist i think we can start that and ron you know, i just uh, want to say that you are so old you are the only person i know left that has an aol account so i got to give you a <laughs> every everyone under 70 has a gmail account but ron is hanging on to aol so my last question because we're out of time we're past our hour is uh you, the CEO of Coke, the biggest controversial thing about Coke is not so much uh, does does the acid in Diet Coke promote decay, uh, does sugar promote decay, but what do you think? Was there cocaine in the original formula back in the 1800s? I think I believe that, but uh, I will tell you that uh, they don't want to listen to me. Uh, they, I keep telling them to start using xylitol. Well, you know how sweet. you know how history repeats itself. Um, everybody thinks uh, um, extremists, but you go back down to that South America when those people chew coca leaves, it's a very, very small amount of cocaine. Yeah. They don't get stunned, but it's an appetite suppressant. And I've always thought when you go down to Peru or you go down to those areas, if, if they sold bags of coca leaves, when obesity, a third of the people, myself included in America, are obese and need to lose belly fat – if, if bringing back chewing on coca leaves or putting that back in Coca-Cola, um, I mean, if you say that, people just think, oh, my God, you're batshit crazy. And well, the, bottom, heard, the bottom line is it, it, it would re- it'd probably be a really good public health thing. I always heard that that's why you're so su- successful with your marathons. You're chewing that leaf and get, keeps you going. All <laughs> I, uh, I, and, uh, and you I, lose uh, your hair. You know, I think I am losing my hair. I, uh, I think I'm going bald, Ron. But, uh, hey, we're out of time, and I just want to beg you from the bottom of my feet. I mean, these kids, I I got the honor of listening to you a half dozen times at major meetings back in the 80s and 90s, and you got all those slides, and you could be ran over by a car tomorrow. Um, That needs to be digitized forever so that people can be uh, learning from your half-century work a half a century from now. Ron, we're out of time. You're, thank you for all that you've done for dentistry. Thank you so much for sparing uh, an hour with me today. Well, it was a pleasure seeing you again, Howard. And I'm going to get on the phone with Joyce and Kim and let them know that you're coming after them. And email Bless Bernard, ta- Tati, uh, Putin's dentist, and Laura Braswell. Yeah, you, you like, and Richard Simonson. God, I haven't seen that guy in 20 years. I would, he was from England originally, right? Uh, uh, Australia, I think. Oh, was it Australia? Okay. Well, hey, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for hey, all that you you personally did for my career, getting me launched. And well, so many of my you're friends. terrific. You're terrific. All right. Have a great day, Ron. You too. Bye-bye.